Good evening, everyone. How are you? Good evening. Hi, how are you, Eduardo? Hi, Mauricio. Hi, Jose. Hi, Hi teacher. How is it going? Fine, fine. What no. about you? Doing great. Enjoying the only cool day in the week. In the <laughs> year. <laughs> it, I cannot believe it. It's August, almost the end of August. And we have only had one day of cool One weather, day. Of rain. <laughs> but cool weekend. In San Salvador, at least. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about you guys? Are you enjoying this weather or do you prefer the heat? <clears throat> in my case, I really love it. Right. When the, when the weather is nippy, to me, it's the it's best. Mm -hmm. It's better. Also, you don't have to wear so much sunscreen. <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't have to protect yourself so much. All right. So, guys, tonight we're going to start by checking the platform. Remember, yesterday was the end of week two or, well, yeah, it was the end of week two. And there, therefore, we should have finished all the homeworks from unit two and the midterm exam. Okay. Um, so for the ones that didn't do the exam, we're gonna check it right now. And if there are if there is any question or any part that you were missing, well now is the moment, right? So for part one, and we're gonna go showing you the answers, right? Again, if you have not done the, the midterm exam. Take a picture, take a screenshot, or make sure to write the answers, but make sure that you have them exactly the way you're saying them here, right? So for number one, it says process of supplying goods to stores and businesses that sell to consumers, that would be distribution. Distribution. Okay? Mm -hmm. So then yeah. we have number two, and it says the, the network. Supply chain. Mm -hmm, that would be? supply chain so make sure they just select it and then you complete it right okay number three the ongoing process of moving parts and products into and out of a company's location is called inventory ma management inventory management right then the coordination of an operation involving people facilities or supplies is logistics exactly right we have it right there and then the process of keeping something in good condition is maintenance, okay? And this one applies for everything, right? Maintenance, mantenimiento, okay? Yeah. So you hit send and you have completed part one of the exam, right? So if you haven't completed the midterm, now is the, at the moment, right? Then you go to part number two and in there it says select the best option, okay? I'm gonna show them to you guys again. If you have not done the exam, you can do it right now with me, or you can do it afterwards. Just take some pictures and the screens or copy the answers, right? So for part two, it says, I wouldn't like to say this. I, I wouldn't like to say this for a certain, but we may need to change our distributors, right? Number two. Can you help me read it, please, Eduardo? Number two. <clears throat> Did the managers finish evaluate, evaluating the TPLs available? Uh -huh. And the answer? Not to my knowledge, sorry. <laughs> okay, all right, not to my knowledge. No que yo sepa, right? Then number three. Um, Jose, can you help us reading, please? I I doubt it is I doubt it is effective to hire more than one third party logistics service. Exactly. I doubt it is effective, right? Number four. Mauricio, can you help us reading it, please? Yes. To the best to the best of my knowledge, mm -hmm. we have increased customer satisfaction. All right. Hasta donde yo sé. To the best of my knowledge, we have increased customer satisfaction, right? Yeah. Remember, we don't translate literally. Recuerden que no les vamos a traducir siempre literal, palabra por palabra. Las adaptamos, lo interpretamos, right? Yeah. Number five. Um, 
Can you help us reading, Vladimir, number five? Number five. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's very unlikely. It's very unlikely for a small company to require logistic global service. Correct. And that would be the answer for number five. So again, we're doing the midterm exam. Okay. Y lo voy a hacer en español. Estamos resolviendo el midterm exam, el examen de la segunda semana, unidad dos. De que si no lo han hecho, pueden irlo haciendo ahorita o tomen el screen o copien para que puedan ir teniendo la respuesta. Right? La idea es que lo terminen esta semana. Then, we're moving to the next section. And in there, we have part number three. Okay? Part number three, it says choose the best alternative. Number one, certain. Example, I can't tonight, but but I am certain to I'm certain to come next time, you think. Okay? Next time. All right. And then let me show you the other. I'm sorry. I forget to show you the answer. Okay. So we have them here. Number two, likely. And in we we go back again, reiniciamos. Okay. Eduardo nos ayuda, please, con la dos. <clears throat> okay. Lately, are lately to they are lately to email rather than phone. Mm -hmm. Likely, this is likely. Likely. Mm -hmm. likely. They are likely. Likely. They, uh, they are likely to email rather than phone. Likely, likely. likely es como decir es más probable, right? Es más probable que ya que manden correo a quién, right? Number three, sure. Um, Jose, please. Here I go. Number number three. Uh -huh. I'm sure that they'll try her best to be there. Yeah, she'll try her best. That she'll try her best. Yeah, correct. Thank you. Number four, Mauricio, please. Ten. Okay. There is a chain what will have a problem with water supply in the future. Uh -huh. There is a chance. Existe la posibilidad. O existe la posibilidad. Yeah. O en español, tal cual, existe la chance. Right? And number five, um, Vladimir, please. Doubt. If possible, Vladimir. Si no, le decimos a Emerson por aquí. Emerson, can you read number five? Perdón, el micrófono estaba apagado. Oh, okay, Vladimir. Doubt. Although we will be back by Friday. Exactly. Dudo. Yo dudo que regresemos el viernes, right? I doubt. I doubt. Mm -hmm. Okay. For the ones that haven't completed, aquí tienen las respuestas, pueden irlas haciendo o tomen la foto y lo hacen después, right? Number I... one, number two, yeah. I doubt or I doubt? Doubt. Suena como da, oh, doubt. Doubt. Uh -huh. I doubt. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, and now we move on to part number four of the exam. I believe it's the last part of the exam, the last section. Did we do the second part? Sí, esto ya lo llamamos a hacer. Como esta. No, yo creo que nos saltamos. A ver. Ah, no, sí, 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 sí. <laughs> okay, so we're going to move on to part number four then. Okay, I'm going to show you guys the answers so you can just work on responding on your platform. Okay, so for the part number four from the midterm exam, okay, number one, um, let's, let's see who has not read. Abigail, can you read number one, please? Nos ayuda leyendo la uno, Abigail, please. If possible. Nos avisa, si no, 
Emerson, tal vez usted nos puede ayudar a leer la 1. Ok, Miss. Thank you. A company that organizes shipment for cooperation to get goods from the manufacturers to a make market. Customer or final point of distribution. Freight forwarding service. Correct. Freight forwarding service. Correct. Then we have number two here. And number two, we're going to check. Um, Jose Bernardo, if you could help us reading number two, please. Okay, miss. It provides a point system to score green building design and construction. Uh -huh. lead, certifi lead certification. Exactly. Thank you. So that would be the answer for number two, part four. Let's go ahead and read then number three. Jorge, can you help us reading number three, please? Products from a supplier are distributed directly to a customer or retail chain with marginal to no handling or storage time. Cross docking capability. Correct. Thank you. Then number four. I don't know, Jonathan, if you can help us reading number four, please. Okay. A uh, set of procedures. To cover and protect a business, IT, infra infrastructure, in the event of a disaster. Exactly, right? So that would be disaster recovery plan. So that's basically question number four, part number four from the midterm exam. Okay? Once you complete that, you will have finished the midterm exam. Again, I'm going to show it. I'm showing you the answers so you don't have excuses not to do your near term exam. <laughs> All right. So, um, we're going to check again how you're doing. I'm going to show you how you are looking on the platform. Okay. Quiero que vean ustedes cómo van en la plataforma right now, so you can see whether or not you need to step up your game or if you're doing fine. Okay. Um, the minimum you should be having on week one should be 96. Y este es un paréntesis. Um, como había una pregunta que no la tomaba como correcta, aunque estaba correcta en la tarea uno, el máximo que le va a dar es 96. No le va a dar 100. Le va a dar 96, pero también está perfecto, igual no hay problema. Así que los que tienen menos de 96, tenemos que retomar la tarea uno hasta que lleguemos al 96, ¿ok? Ese es el, el mínimo aceptable para que lo pasen, right? And then, obviously, week number two, right? All the homeworks from week number two. So we have Carlos Vladimir. He completed the two weeks. He just needs to retake this one. And the midterm exam. If you see here, this is week three, week four. Week five, we don't have platform. So we have the final exam for the week five midterm, which is the one we just finished doing in the platform, he already completed. This, uh, he, you already did them, but you need to retake them to increase your scores, okay? The midterm, it's, it's fine at 95 if you want to leave it there. Daido also retake the first homework and you got to do the second and the midterm, Daido. Eduardo, you're, you're doing good with 92. You try to raise it to 96. Then homework two, try to work on that and complete the midterm, okay? Then we have Amazon, same thing, completed week one, pending the week two and the midterm, okay? Then Fatima Gabriela, pending everything. Jonathan, Jonathan, what's happening here? <laughs> you are pending everything then. Week one, week two, the midterm. Then we have Yes, um, Jorge, good job with week one, week two, almost completing week three already, very good. In midterm, you get 100, Jorge, very good. Jose Carlos, oh no, yeah, Jose Carlos, same thing. Así tendrían que verse ahorita, 96 and 100, semana uno y dos. All right, <laughs> in the midterm. Then Jose Lopez, 
almost there, pending week two in the midterm. Juan Carlos, good, also very good. Just retake the midterm, Juan Carlos. We need to have a hundred here. <laughs> then Juan Jose, okay. good here, pending the midterm exam. Carla Sofia, let's retake. I can get a 96. So we gotta go to 96 in the homework one and also to 100 in homework two, Carla. And the midterm, you can retake it. Okay. So you can get to 100. Then we have Kenya at 96 and 100. Also completed the midterm. Mauricio, very good. Completed, completed with one and two, working on the others. And then 100 in the midterm. Okay. Might have very good with one and two completed, pending the midterm exam. Might have. Nelly with one and with two, you have to retake with three, Nelly, and almost completed all the platform. Very good. Then Raul, same as Jonathan, pending everything. <laughs> Sandra, Abigail, completed with one, pending with two, and pending to retake these others, to complete them, okay? And then, Wendy, let's retake week number one, the homework from the first week. Let's just do it again, Wendy, so you can go to 96 here, and you gotta have 100 here, and the midterm you already completed. Week three and four, I can tomarla de nuevo, hacerla de nuevo, hasta llegar a 100, okay? Other than that, that's how you're looking right now. Okay, so you, you can be aware. Nadie puede decir no, amigos. <laughs> you have seen how you're doing right now. Okay, so guys, before we start, I wanted to let you know about this exercise that I found. Have you ever measured your vocabulary? Have you ever measured your vocabulary? There is an activity that you can do to measure how good you are or not. Listen, the minimum because you, are that, you guys are intermediate four, right? Almost advanced. The minimum amount of words that you should be doing per minute is 18. 18 words per minute, it's the minimum acceptable for a person in this level, okay? So if you can do, we can do a test, okay? Um, and it's like this. I put the timer in one minute, I put the timer in one minute and I give you one letter. So you have to tell me all the words that you can with one with that letter. Okay. So when the and in one minute, obviously, right? For example, uh, let's do an exercise. Um someone, if someone can take it, can take the chronometer, right? This is just an example. I'm going to say as many words as possible in one minute with letter F, okay? So, friend, bird, trick, fear, fast, fight, feel, forget, and then let him think, well, faith, faith them. Also, I say fear already. Mm. What other one can I say? Oh, we can also say fish. All right, we can also say focus and then speak. All right, and words like that, right? So the point is in one minute, you have to say as many words as you can with the given letter, okay? The minimum that we should be saying is 18 letter, 18 words per minute, okay? Sometimes the first time that you do it, it's like, oh my God, I cannot remember, right? But the more you practice that exercise, the more you go and gain vocabulary in those letters. So who wants to do a dry test? Who wants to try right now? ¿Quién quiere medir ahorita? ¿Quién quiere ver cuántas puede decir? Es para que tengan un estándar ustedes más o menos como vamos. Okay? Right? Remember that the minimum is 18 per minute. And in a minute, you can remember as well. Sometimes you know more, but you just don't remember in, in the exact moment, right? <laughs> so who wants to try? Raise your hand. Levante la mano quien quiera tratar. Es literalmente eso. Le doy un minuto y ustedes dicen todas las palabras que recuerdan con esa letra. Okay? Um, 
Um, let's begin with Jorge. Okay. Jorge, I'm gonna give you an easy one. You're going to begin with letter A. A as in alpha. Jorge. When I say go, you start. When you diga go, I need to, okay? Only only a question. Mm -hmm. Whatever words. Any words in English, obviously. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that begin with the letter A. Okay. So we're going with uh three, two, one. Go. Actor, access, amazing, Amazon. Almost. Mm -hmm. Animals. <laughs> Up. <laughs> okay, don't worry, we're gonna start again. And this is okay. what I was telling you. The first time, we, and this is normal, the first time it happens even to the native speakers because you don't, usually we are learning every day, we learn new words of vocabulary. I hope you're learning new words of vocabulary every day, guys. So, but sometimes we just don't pay too much attention to that, right? So when somebody asks you, letters, uh, words with this letter, we're like, it's not that we don't know, it's that we're trying to refresh the cassette, right? <laughs> So let's, I'm going to give you a start again from the one minute, um, Jorge. Same letter, okay? Try to, I'm going to give you a few moments for you to think. Okay. I'm, go, I'm going to drink some water. You think your letter, your words with the letter A? <laughs> Get ready. Just a few seconds. Let me just drink water. Okay, when I say go, you begin, okay? Okay. Um, como tip, like a tip, try not to spend too much time, like, try not to do this. Mm, when you do this, you forget what you are doing. So try not to do that. Mm, try not to do that, okay? Okay. Okay, three, two, one. Wait a minute, I want to say. Three, two, one, go. Amazing, actor, animal, actress, mm -hmm. amount, mm -hmm. and yeah. Ask. Mm -hmm. All. Mm -hmm. All right, time is up. So you gave me eight words. Okay. Which is more than the first time. The first time you gave me three. So you see, the more you practice, the more you will remember. And okay. then you go, then there are many words. And ancestor, ancestor, ancient, right? There are many words, <laughs> aliens, right? In the moment, we just don't remember. But the more we practice, this is going to help us with our fluency. This is going to help us also with flexibility when speaking, right? Who else wants to try now you have a number, okay, and you can continue increasing, 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 right? Let's have it on the MPS, okay? Let's go. Who else wants to try it? Let's see. You're going to have one minute, same as Jorge, and you can okay. say as many words. Um, Eduardo. Um, 
Let's go with Eduardo then. Eduardo, your letter is going to be M. M as in mother. M. Eh? Ah, okay. Okay. So <clears throat> when I say when I say go, I'm gonna give you a few seconds. I'm gonna give you a few seconds. Try to get ready. Prepare your mind. Okay. difficult <laughs> <laughs> but try to connect try to connect try to make a chain of words with the letter in your mind <clears throat> tell me when you're ready okay all right when i say go you <clears throat> okay three. machine wait a minute three okay. two one and go Okay, May machine magazine uh, my maintenance made mails um mail more men map many material mm -hmm. Market, Mary, Meat, Medicine, um, Memory, Measure, uh, Menu, maybe, um, Mind, uh, Million, Milk. Uh, all right time is up mirror <laughs> time is up all right so you gave me you gave it's me difficult. 17 <laughs> yeah but the letter m is more common so you gave me 17 words okay oh. but because mm -hmm. some letters are more common than others to find words right like if i tell you letter words with the letter x like what <laughs> right but in this case letter m it was a little bit easier so very good 17 words remember you just keep going and going, right? Tiene una, ya tiene una, como una base, y se lo va incrementando más, 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 right? Who else wants to try? Let's see. Who else wants to try? At least so you can have an average of where you are right yeah. now, and you can continue improving. Okay. okay. Me teacher. Um, all right, Jose. You're going to go with Jose, then Mayra, and then Mauricio, okay? Um, all right, Jose. You're going to use the letter B. B as in Bravo, okay? Okay, miss. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to get your mind ready. Try to create words one next to the other in chain. Okay. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you like 10 seconds. You tell me when you're ready. Let's do it. All right then. Three, two, one, go. Beer. Ball, balloon, basketball, B, B size, bulk, um, buy, boat, um, battery. I miss the other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, book. Mm -hmm. Buy. Um, beautiful. All right, time is up. <laughs> <laughs> and you gave me 13 words. Okay, all okay. right. So that's write it down so you can remember and you can practice and increase, 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 right? Adding more words. Very good. So now we're going to go with Mayra. Mayra, your letter is going to be W. Okay, your letter is going to be W. And I'm going to give you a few seconds, Mayra, so you can prepare your mind, get the words ready in chain one after the other 
And let me know when you're ready, Maida. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, then. Let's begin. When I say go, you start. Three, two, one, go. Watermelon, water, wish, um, will, will, Wednesday, one thing, mm -hmm. um, well, wine. Mm -hmm. Wallet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Walk, mm -hmm. work. All right, <laughs> good. Work. <Time> up. <laughs> and you gave me 11 words, Maida. <laughs> 11 <laughs> words. So write it down and you can increase, right? Cada vez que acuerde, practique. Vaya buscando por letra y le vamos incrementando, right? Pero al menos ya tenemos una base donde estoy y de ahí solo para arriba, ¿no? Así que very good. And then Mauricio, okay? Mauricio, do you want to participate? Yeah. Okay. You're going to have the letter E as in echo. Letter E. E. Mm -hmm. e as in echo, as in egg, okay? Yeah. All right. When I say go, I'm going to give you yeah. a few seconds. I'm going to give you a few seconds. Yeah. Try to practice your words in your head as many as possible with letter E. Con la letra E. In English. Oh, okay. English. <laughs> All right. E, e, e. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. Oh. But in English, it's E, right? So when I say go, you start. Three, two, yeah. one, go. Uh, and mm -hmm. eat. Mm -hmm. Enjoy. Yeah. Enter. Mm -hmm. Russia. Mm hmm. Exercise. Yep. Excuse. Mm -hmm. uh, explain. Mm -hmm. uh, and roar. Mm -hmm. uh, Explain. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, All right, time is up. Uh, <laughs> and you gave me 10 words, Marty. You uh, gave me 10 words. Yeah. So that's good, all right? Remember, write it down and keep practicing, right? Recuerden esto para que ustedes tengan una base donde están ahorita y... Yeah. Includes, you can even, you know, you can just search when you have free time in your in the weekends or something. If you want to practice, letter uh, in Google, words with the letter A, words with the letter B, and practice with uh, the timer. Just read them yeah. and practice. And that way you're going to memorize them. And eventually, the more you have, the more you will speak, right? That's going to help you a lot with the fluency, guys. Okay? All right. So now that we know where we stand. <laughs> We're going to go with the, we have a short video here. Re, remember what we were talking about last night. We were talking about third party logistics, right? Who can tell me what is a third party logistics? In your own words. Who remembers what is a third party logistics? Oh my God, nobody remembers. <laughs> okay, don't worry. It's literally that. It's an outsourcing company, right? Uh, uh, Third-party logistics are companies like big companies 
that you can hire to do the work for you, right? Everything related to the logistics portion of the work for you. So we are gonna look at the student manual right now. And we have here on page 20, 21, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, page 21. We have this conversation, okay? I need one volunteer to read Bob and one volunteer to read Daisy. Volunteers, volunteers. Okay, Mauricio, help us reading Bob. And yeah. we need one person to read Daisy. Me, teacher. Okay, Mayra, please. Begin, Mauricio, please. Okay. There is no more room in our house for more of your organic soap. Don't you think it? Time to take business up off the house. I found something called Dear Party Logist and Google. The service call helped you up with the store. I don't think so, Bob. As far as I know, the business is not big enough to hire a third party service. To the best of my knowledge, the soap is selling like crazy, and I believe it could help us to sell more. Well, I was actually thinking of outsourcing the package, choose a couple of two companies from the internet, and then we can call them to get some advice. Thank you, very good. Okay, now we're gonna go with round number two. Second round, we're reading the same conversation, please. Two volunteers, one person to read Bob and Daisy, another person. We we'll have volunteers. You're going to read only the same conversation. This is round number two. We need one volunteer for Daisy and one for Bob. Eduardo, you can help us reading Bob, please. And then who wants to read Daisy? Let's see. My uh, Okay, cut here, please. Help us reading Daisy. <clears throat> Okay, there is no more room in our house for more of your organic soap. Do you think it's time to take business out of the house? I found something called third party logistics on Google. This service could help you out with the storage. I don't think so. I don't think so, Bob. As far as I know, the business is not big enough to hire a third party service. <clears throat> to the best of my knowledge, the salt is selling like crazy, and I believe it could help us to sell more. Well, I was actually thinking of outsourcing the packaging, choose a couple of those companies from the internet, and then we can call them to get some advice. All right, very good. So, guys, we have here some questions about this conversation. And the first one says, are Bob and Daisy having problems to store their products? According to the conversation, are Bob and Daisy having problems to store their products? Yeah, because there is no more room. Exactly, in their Stretch. house. Very good, Mauricio, yes. Number two, do they know a lot about repeal, third-party third party logistics? Do they know about third-party logistics? I think they don't know enough about GPLS. Exactly. They don't know too much about third-party logistics. Now, and number three, do you think 
Bob and Daisy will consider prices when hiring a 3PL. For me, yes, of course. Consider yeah. price. That might be one of the things they will consider, right? Like that would be normal for them to consider that. Okay, so right now we're gonna go to the breakout rooms and you guys are going to create a conversation similar to this one that you that you just read. Now, be careful because that conversation is gonna have a continuation in another activity later tonight. Right now we're going to create like the base of the conversation, okay? So it has to be similar in the sense that you have to have, you need to mention what type of business do you have what is the problem that you're having in your business right now? And the other person is going to suggest a solution, right? It can be third party logistics or it can be any other solution, right? In this case, all right? But ideally third party. So try to incorporate in your conversation, try to incorporate these expressions. As far as I know, ¿Qué les decía yo que? ¿Cómo decir? Hasta donde yo sé, right? As far as I know, as far as yo sé, as far as I know, try to incorporate it. And then the other one, esta tiene dos versiones. To the best of my knowledge, o solamente to my knowledge, right? Either or. Uh, es lo mismo, es, uh, sorry, es como lo que yo sé, right? To the best of my knowledge. Lo más que yo sé de eso, right? To the best of my knowledge, or to my knowledge. Try to incorporate those two expressions in the conversation and remember the scenario. You have to explain what kind of, in the conversation, it has to be clear. What kind of company or what kind of business you have, what is the problem you're having, and why do you need to consider other options, okay, for your business. In this case, for example, um, they mentioned, as Mauricio said, they mentioned that they don't have a space in the house. The company is selling a lot of soap, so they have to create more soap, but they don't have a space to store the soap, right? So they need warehouse space. And then she also mentions that she even was planning to outsource the packaging. So it's too much work to do the packaging for the soaps also. So they have two problems in their business that they need help. So that's why he suggests that, right? So what you're going to do, guys, is the same scenario. We're going to be discussing about your company. How is the company doing? How is the business? We're doing this. We're not doing that, etc. And then you're going to mention one or two problems that the business is experimenting, is having, and considering the options, right? Then the other person can ask questions, make comments, and probably suggest the third party, okay? Careful, you are not going to discuss the three party logistics. You're going to suggest it after discussing the problems of internally of your company, right? That's what's going to be happening in this conversation. I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes to create your conversation. And we're going to go back. We're going to be back here in 15. Okay. The rooms are open. You can join right now and start working on those conversations. Pueden ingresar a la sala, ya están abiertas. Ingresemos a la sala, por favor. Dígame, Jonathan. Uh, miss, can you send account the invitation? Ah, uh, yes. Give me one moment. Lo voy a mover a la sala 3, porque ahí está Mayra y es hola, Jonathan. Para que le diga, okay. por favor. Uh -huh. Ahora.
Hello, teacher. Hi. Uh, I am still working. Oh, no. Okay. I hope uh, tomorrow. Okay. All right. Uh, receive the glass. All right. To participate. <laughs> All right, Carla. Don't worry. Thank you for letting me know. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Miss. Hello. Can you allow to share the screen? Oh, give me one. Can you try now, please? Okay. Yes. It's letting you, right? Yes, I sent it. Okay. Perfect. All right. See you in a few minutes.
Hello. We're waiting for everyone to come back. <laughs> Hello. Hi. All right, guys. So we're going to begin with the first room's conversation. And here we have Emerson and Juan Carlos. Okay. So let's hear their conversation, please. Okay. Uh, Emerson, are you there? <laughs> hello. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, hello, hello, Emerson. Uh, do you have a few minutes? I need to talk, uh, talk with you. I have a meeting with a marketing and sales manager, and I will review some reports uh, from their, their areas. Well, uh, hi Juan. Referring that, I could say to you that the last last month I put in contact with the personnel of three companies in charge of the developed three PLs. That one is Blue Logistic. They have an operation here in El Salvador. Others is Movi Logistic, but we decided heading to. ALG El Salvador. They have a more of uh, a best offers to the price of, of the operation. Okay, okay. Um, I write, uh, do you have a, a good idea? Um, when you uh, when you think uh, we could uh, we start? Well, um, the company say that they starting from the first of September. They develop they develop a program of training, and after that, we'll implement a system. We can help us uh, to the the develop uh, develop uh, activities in our facilities. Okay, okay. Uh, perfect. Uh, I will wait uh, for a news uh, and progress on the and on this project. And I will support uh, support you in whatever you need, okay? Yes, I I appreciate it to say that and I okay. follow in that case and I say you the result. Okay, thanks for your cooperation. Okay. All right, nice conversation, Emerson and Carlos. It was very well prepared, it was very natural, and you were very fluent, so very good. Thank you. All right, we're going to go with room number two right now. We're going to listen to Jose Romero and Mauricio Velasquez. Mauricio, are you ready? Okay. Okay, here I go. There. Hi, Mauricio. I'm trying to launch a product. It is ice cream. But I have a problem. I don't have the right equipment for transport the ice cream, neither for keep safe the product. Can you help me, please? Hi, Jose. Yes, of course. I think uh, I think you need a TPL and at the side. Could you pay for it? I don't have any idea about uh, TPL pricing or how it works. Can you explain me some about it? Okay, easy. Let a tall day give up a side and earn a percentage. They will earn a $1,000 from the handing of a raw material and process to the finished product and distribution. Well, it sounds great. I will do it. Uh, you can call uh two three four five zero 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 zero. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That's it all, Miss. All right, that's really good. Nice job with that fluency. That conversation was very natural, and also you were include including the question, right? So nice job, guys. Thank you. Okay. So now we're going to listen to the conversation from room 
number three. And in here we have Jonathan Gonzalez and who, who did you work with, Jonathan? Mayra. Oh, Mayra. Okay, Mayra and Jonathan, please. Go okay, uh, Miss Bat couldn't finish the, the dialogue. Okay, did you write it? Do you want to uh, share the screen so you can read it? Uh, okay, let me tell you. Let me try. Mm -hmm. Because I, I need a cell phone. Okay. Mayra just connected. <laughs> yes, hello. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> You're on time. Okay. Okay, hello, Mayra. I want to save something. Yeah, let me tell you that we need to sell more to measuring a volcano because it can be about shape. Yes, I think about that. Um, um, I think we need to create a promotion to sell our products. Uh, okay, I don't see so. As as far as I know, we may have losses in a profit. Yes, and um, in my knowledge, uh, some roadside stall have good profits. We can sell in both of them. Okay, I agree with you. Okay, <laughs> I hope I good profit <laughs> and sell all broke. Okay, probably. <laughs> we will um, see. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, thank you. Nice job in improvising. That's what I was telling you at the beginning with the practice of the vocabulary and that um, the more vocabulary you have, the more you will be able to answer, even if you didn't write the dialogue, but you will improvise, you will generate an answer because you have it, right? So good job, Mayra, Jonathan, adapting and improvising. <laughs> okay. So now we're gonna go with the conversation for room number four. And in here we have Nelly and Jose Bernardo. Go ahead. Hey Bernardo, I'm thinking in outsourcing some people to help us to sell more jewelry. But why do we need to outsource some people? We can sell this for a sound or around. Each time we have more clients and we don't have enough time to serve them all. I've heard something to have something called third party service. They come help us. Uh, okay, but could you explain me what they do exactly, please? They do some activities like the storage and deliver products. Mm, okay, let's try it, but let's find some information about them. Yes, we can find information on Google. Okay. <laughs> All right, good job with that conversation. It was very, very specific to what we requested, right? Specify an area where you would need it and make a suggestion what could help and how could that repeal help you right very good Nelly and Jose thank you now we're gonna finish listening to room number five and we have listening to the conversation we have Eduardo Magaña and Jorge Anton go ahead Eduardo are you there ah, okay <clears throat> okay uh, partner we had a, a serious problem uh, yesterday because <clears throat> the deliver uh, has fallen because uh, we had a problem with the with that service 
So we need to look, uh, I encourage you to look at uh, other company that can offer a deliver uh, as soon as possible. Well, my friend, I could, I could recommend a very cool logistic company uh, in El Salvador and uh, they uh, they have uh, uh, many offices in the United States. <clears throat> okay, the best of my knowledge, uh, I will be honest with you because I don't have any idea about it. So for the reason, I will try to be focused just in the logistics uh, inside of the company and you can take the time to look at other company to make the deliver and change the, the, the company. So is that okay for you? We can work together. As far as I know, they have a very good delivery times and very low prices. If you want to send the product locally, there are different uh, delivery companies, but they have uh, many offices in El Salvador. But uh, if you want to bring your product from the United States, I could recommend the, um, the QuickBook company. They uh they are a good logistic company and they have um an office and uh, Miami in the United States. Uh, it's a very good logistic company and your shipment will be faster. Okay, thank you so much for taking your time and sharing that information. So I will try to be focused on the logistics inside of the company and you will uh, you will look uh will you will contact with that company. And I will be uh, proud of you, okay? Okay, it's a pleasure for me to help you and your clients will be happy with their delivery times. Good job. That conversation was not only very fluent, it was also very detailed, explained, right? Step by step, according to the services that were being suggested right there. So very good, honey, and Eduardo. Thank you. All right. So guys, now we're going to go to, I'm going to show you a short video. Give me one moment. Let me share this. This is a short video only. We're just, so we're just going to watch it mostly because I want to check. This is in the student's manual, right? So it says how to work with a 3PL, with a third party logistics, right? Um. Okay, so as I was telling you, yesterday we saw the 10 steps to say something about third-party logistics, like the 10 characteristics of third-party logistics. But we still have to think about how to work with them, what are the advantages and disadvantages. It's not always pretty, everything we do, right, with other them. Oh, Eduardo, thank you for reminding me. I'm going to take attendance before we continue, guys. Uh, so please be ready just to say here or present. Thanks, Eduardo. Um, Carlos Vladimir Diaz. Carlos Vladimir. Dairo Jonathan Fuentes. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. Me. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Jonathan Jose Gonzalez. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo Lopez. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Argueta Romero. Present. Thank you, Jose Cesar Lemus. Juan Carlos Herrera Delgado. Present teacher. Thank you, Juan Jose Herrera Alvarenga. Present teacher. Thank you, Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you, Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Present teacher. Thank you, Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Teacher, perdón, present. present. Thank you, Mauricio. Thank you, Mayra. Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Present. Thank you, Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Present. Thank you, and Wendy Maricela Ramírez. 
Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna share the video with you right now. And remember, we watch it twice, right? The first time it's just to check for vocabulary. And if there's no vocabulary like new ones, then don't worry, we will just talk about the video, right? So first time we're checking for subtitles. Um I'm Jesse Janae and this did you do you listen to the video audio? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, okay. yes. All right. I'm Jesse Janae, and this is Shipping Things. And today we're talking about three PLs. Are they right for your business? And how do you figure out how much it will cost you? Three PL stands for third party logistics. It's basically a layer in your supply chain helping you with the logistics piece. And I know that sounds a little complicated, but it's actually really simple. Think of it like this. Your business makes a product and then delivers it straight to the customer. That would essentially be a 1PL. Then if you start involving shippers like UPS or FedEx, now you've got someone in between, that's a 2PL. And then let's say you supply a warehouse with your product, which then ships it onto the customer on your behalf. That, my friend, is a 3PL. A 3PL is a physical warehouse that helps you with things like freight, warehousing, distribution. And they can even be industry specific like cold storage for food businesses. But if you're an e-com, you're going to want to look for one that specializes in inventory management, fulfillment, and returns. If you're asking yourself whether you're big enough to start working with a 3PL, that actually isn't the best question. Figuring out whether a 3PL is the right fit for your business all comes down to the math. So let's jump into how 3PLs charge. 3PL usually has four base fees. It starts with storage. They're gonna charge you for how much space your stuff takes up in their facility. Then you've got picking. Picking is what you pay for having a human being walk around their facility, grab your stuff, and put it in a box. Then you've got packaging. Any packaging you haven't already prepaid for or sent to them, they're going to charge you for. And finally, postage. Postage is what you pay for actually shipping your product to your customer. I just wanna remind you that 3PLs have a really hard job to do too. It's almost like fractional ownership of a warehouse. Instead of you having to own a big facility and pallet racking and have employees doing shipping every day, they do that on your behalf. They also have incredible software systems a lot of times that help your business run like a well-oiled machine. So how do you know if you're picking the right 3PL for your business? Well, here's a few criteria. Location. It's really important that the location of the warehouses is nearby the manufacturing or geographically optimized for where you're shipping. Then price. We already talked about all the different fees, but make sure to really do the math, open a spreadsheet, plan it out. Packaging. A lot of 3PLs will not actually work with custom packaging, so make sure you plan out exactly how you want your product to look before selecting a partner. And finally, scalability. It's so really important to know exactly how many facilities your 3PL has and whether they fit in with your growth plans. Think about where your business is gonna be in a year. Are they a good fit for you then? Choosing a 3PL is sort of like choosing a mate. They're gonna have all your inventory and you're gonna be working with them constantly to make sure your customers are happy. So make the decision wisely. You do not, you do not want a nasty breakup. All right, so, and this is what I was mentioning to you guys, right? But before we talk about the video, well, let's check if you found vocabulary words. You can write them in the chat or you can let me know. Let's see. Wisely, it means with wisdom, sabiamente, wisely. Okay. And then the other one we have in there is a spreadsheet. And that one is from Excel. A spreadsheet is una hoja de calculo, like in Excel. Spreadsheet, hoja de calculo, right? Let's see, what else? What other words? Wisely is the pronunciation of the first one, right? Yeah, wisely, sabiamente. Wisely. Yes. Mm -hmm. and a spreadsheet. A spreadsheet, yes. You have two words there, one with the letter S and one with the letter W. <laughs> yes. A spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Spreadsheet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. The others, did you find vocabulary? 
or you understood absolutely everything in the video. Let's see. The other ones. Oh, postage. Postage son gastos de envío. Es como shipping. Postage. And e-com is short for, for internet commercial, like an online store. E-com, comercio en línea. Okay, e-com. E-commerce, meaning a web page, a web store. Okay. Nobody else wrote words. Do you have e more words? To say e online. Uh -huh. e com e com is short for e commerce. E com is short for e commerce. O sea, un negocio en línea. E commerce. Uh -huh. Do you know what is a fee, guys? Uh, quota. Yes, it can be quota or tarifa. Right? Uh -huh. Tarifa de algo. And then scalability. Se traduce literalmente escalabilidad. Regarding processes to escalation. Right? Processes for escalation. Okay? All right. So we're going to watch the video one more time. And this time, when it finishes, we're going to discuss it. What is she mentioning? Does she have a good point or not? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What do you think about it, okay? So we're gonna watch it one more time. This is Janae, and this is Shipping Things. And today we're talking about 3PLs. Are they right for your business? And how do you figure out how much it will cost you? <laughs> 3PL stands for Third Party Logistics. It's basically a layer in your supply chain helping you with the logistics piece. And I know that sounds a little complicated, but it's actually really simple. Think of it like this. Your business makes a product and then delivers it straight to the customer. That would essentially be a 1PL. Then if you start involving shippers like UPS or FedEx, now you've got someone in between, that's a 2PL. And then let's say you supply a warehouse with your product, which then ships it onto the customer on your behalf. That, my friend, is a 3PL. A 3PL is a physical warehouse that helps you with things like freight, warehousing, distribution. And they can even be industry specific like cold storage for food businesses. But if you're an e-com, you're gonna to wanna to look for one that specializes in inventory management, fulfillment, and returns. If you're asking yourself whether you're big enough to start working with a 3PL, that actually isn't the best question. Figuring out whether a 3PL is the right fit for your business all comes down to the math. So let's jump into how 3PLs charge. 3PL usually has four base fees. It starts with storage. They're gonna charge you for how much space your stuff takes up in their facility. Then you've got picking. Picking is what you pay for having a human being walk around their facility, grab your stuff, and put it in a box. Then you've got packaging. Any packaging you haven't already prepaid for or sent to them, they're going to charge you for. And finally, postage. Postage is what you pay for actually shipping your product to your customer. I just wanna remind you that 3PLs have a really hard job to do too. It's almost like fractional ownership of a warehouse. Instead of you having to own a big facility and pallet racking and have employees doing shipping every day, they do that on your behalf. They also have incredible software systems a lot of times that help your business run like a well-oiled machine. So how do you know if you're picking the right 3PL for your business? Well, here's a few criteria. Location. It's really important that the location of the warehouses is nearby the manufacturing or geographically optimized for where you're shipping. Then price. We already talked about all the different fees, but make sure to really do the math, open a spreadsheet, plan it out. Packaging. A lot of 3PLs will not actually work with custom packaging, so make sure you plan out exactly how you want your product to look before selecting a partner. And finally, scalability. It's really important to know exactly how many facilities your 3PL has and whether they fit in with your growth plans. Think about where your business is gonna be in a year. Are they a good fit for you then? Choosing a 3PL is sort of like choosing a mate. They're gonna have all your inventory and you're gonna be working with them constantly to make sure your customers are happy. So make the decision wisely. You do not, you do not want a nasty breakup. You do realize that it's a double double pun intended, right? Double pun 
intended. Double pun intended means doble sentido. It's an, a broma, broma de doble sentido, right? When she says, you do not want a nasty breakup, and then she breaks up the box, right? But then she's also talking about breaking up with someone when you break up with a business or when you break up with your partner, with your boyfriend or girlfriend. So it's the same word, breakup. So that, that's what she was talking about, right? That's double pun intended, right? So what can you say about the video? What do you think about it? What, are, what, does, she, what does she talk about in there? I want to hear your comments, guys. I want to see what you understood from the video. You can raise your hand so I can hear you. If you don't participate, guys, it makes me feel like you didn't understand the video. And then I get worried like, oh, this guy's listening, not working. <laughs> so, but I'm sure you did understood something. So. You did understand something, so let me hear what whatever it got, it was that you got from there. Edward. <clears throat> okay, I I understood that it's really important to be uh, really wisely when you really want to get a partner and including your business and work together. So you need to to know what is the um the spend that you will and the money that you will spend, the, for mm -hmm. example, in this case, the postage that they mentioned before, and also with a really great spreadsheet and to need to be awareness and about the the, the partner. Exactly. Like Those are some of the points that she mentioned. That's, that's right, Eduardo. Thank you. Let's see who else. Who else understood something from the video? It can be any part, not necessarily everything she said, right? Me to share. Go ahead, please. I understand the video. Um, the TPL is not necessarily big, uh, big, uh, big company. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little company. Uh, contract this um a company for delegate this part of logistic and in management of the inventory. Mm -hmm, that's right. Thanks, Maida. Who else? What else is mm -hmm, go ahead? Uh, I understood the TPL uh, is uh, a warehouse physically. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they double two points is location, uh, is a um, uh, uh, reduce the, uh, the cost and It's a, a, a scalability, 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 uh -huh. uh, scala, scalability. Uh -huh. um, uh, that uh, is uh, adjust uh, in your plan of uh, grow. Mm -hmm. that's, that. mm -hmm. that's right. And that's a good point. Um, Juan Carlos, thank you. All right. So, yeah. There are some things that you gotta take into consideration when choosing a third party logistics, right? It's not just because, oh, I'm gonna pay them and they are gonna do everything. So I don't have to worry about anything. It does not work like that, right? You do still have to do your part of the job. And for that, I'm gonna show you guys this document we have in here, okay? Which are like considerations you gotta have when you're choosing a 3PL, all right? So how to choose 
one of them, right? They are not all the same. If they don't all give you the same results according to the type of business you're having, right? So the first one, the first thing you have to know on how to select which 3 pa you're going to use. Let's read number one. Who can help me reading point number one, please? Me, teacher. Maya, please. And Emerson, you help me with number two afterward. Go ahead, Maya. Know why and what you're outsourcing. The first step is making the decision is now knowing exactly what is that you want to achieve by outsourcing. Some businesses just want to save money through lower labor costs and more efficient warehouse management. Others might want more scalability than they call our shipping house Still others are looking for more flexible service. Particularly, 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 is, particularly is their seasonal. seasonal businesses or this with variable inventory needs. Mm -hmm. So the first step when you're choosing or looking on the idea to hire an outsourced third party, you got to know why you are going to do it. Do you really need to hire a third party? Is your business big enough or do you have so many necessities that you're going to do it, right? And then what you're outsourcing. You don't necessarily need to outsource all of your business to a third party logistic. Maybe you just want to outsource the packaging or you just want to outsource the billing or the warehouse and inventory. It can be parts of your business that you do with third-party logistics. You don't necessarily have to do all of your business with them, right? So for that, you got to determine. You got to check. You got to review how is your business doing and see how you're going to move there, okay? Number two, Emerson, please. Number two, ask the three PLs about their process and technology. A good 3PL should be able to explain how they'll help to achieve your goals in detail, including their process and technology that support this process. Mm -hmm. just, just that access. part. Just that part, Emerson. Thank okay. you. That's like the okay. most important. Uh -huh. So, yeah, point number two. You are not going to just give them your money and do the work for me. No, right? You have to ask them questions. You have to investigate, right? So you can ask them things, ask the third party logistics how to explain to you how they are going to help you achieve your goals, right? What processes they can offer to you and what technology do they have to support the processes. You can ask them questions, right? You don't have to just hire them without knowing anything blindly, right? No, you can ask for information and they should give it to you so that you can make an informed decision, okay? Let's read number three, please. We need a volunteer for number three and one for number four. Hey, teacher. Mauricio, number three, please. Yeah. Okay. The rules if they when Choosing a third party logic provider. When choosing a third party logic provider, provider. find some provider, mm -hmm. find some moment you trust with the culture and values to match your brand. In all aspects, you should view this as partnership with mutual understanding and fear. Priority. Exactly. Look for reviews. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So first is key when choosing a third party. If you don't trust the company, you're not going to do business with them, right? Or if you trust the company, but other people think it's bad or they have bad reviews, you shouldn't be doing business, right? So you trust is important, right? What is your gut telling you about them? 
And Jonathan, if you could help us with number four, please. Okay, do your due diligence before entering into a, an agreement with a TPL, check their history and get the recommendation from trust sources so you can fully understand your prospective uh, partner and their track record. Exactly, right? Do not go and make an agreement and sign a contract for service if you don't know their history, right? Or if you don't know if other people recommend them or not. So you gotta have a perspective. You have one idea, but you gotta have all the, all the reviews and perspectives, right? And then it says their track record. Have they done business with other companies in the past? Did they fulfill the promises with the other businesses? Did they comply? Or were, did they just lie and steal the money, et cetera? Right? So you gotta do your due diligence making, meaning do your homework, all right? So guys, we're gonna go to the breakout rooms and I want you to incorporate, or it's gonna be the same rooms with the same people. I want you to create or continue the conversation where you suggest that you use the third party logistics. But this time, you're going to be discussing with your partner, why do you think we should hire a, part, a third party logistics and why not? So one of you is going to say the pros and the other person is going to say the cons, right? Pros and contra. So in the conversation, one person will discuss, I think we should outsource for example, someone was saying, which I think it was Jonathan Kim, I don't remember. They were selling avocados and tomatoes, something like that. Okay, I think we should outsource the shipping, the shipping portion of the company, of the business, because we are not selling too many tomatoes and avocados because we don't have trucks to ship them on time. And with an outsourcing party, we could do that effectively. They have more trucks so they can distribute to the markets in the country. And then the other person can be, um, well, yeah, it sounds like a good idea, but how do we know if the trucks are clean, if they're in good condition? So, okay, you're going to discuss with your partner whether or not you're going to hire, outsource a third party logistics. You're going to discuss the, the pros and the cons, okay, in the conversation. Okay, so the rooms are gonna be open right now and you're gonna have 10 minutes to create the conversation. Pueden ingresar a la sala. Tienen 10 minutos para su conversación.
Okay, we're all back to the session. Let's begin with these conversations that you just prepared. We're going to start with room number one, again with Emma Martin and Juan Carlos, please. Go ahead. Emerson, Juan Carlos. Okay. And uh, I start uh, with the advantage. When talking about the advantage of the TPLs, we found learning and more prominent, more not uh, noteworthy time and cost efficiency have proven the schedule of with a set or a skill to adjust their gear and framework, give higher adaptability to the ge geographic dimensions, deal with their set, including the including workforce site and transformance sell it expense into the variable cost, restrict coordination skill to a center around their center's business. Okay, and I talking about uh, okay. uh, I talking about uh, the disadvantage uh, for use the uh, TPLs. Uh, some disadvantage is uh, Maybe the loss of control of the customer because uh, it's a three part, part, part it, uh, business that try di uh, directly with with a customer. Uh, if they uh, it uh, doesn't work good, uh, our customer. Uh, or customer uh, affect or, or customer directly. Okay, um, institutional uh, uh, knowledge may be lost uh, because we can we can lose a uh, I don't know what to say propiedad de la empresa, no sé, identificar propiety, propiety, propiety. Yes, uh, you can lose. Um, uh, dedicate a, uh, we need a, a contract a dedicated transportation uh, is a disadvantage because uh, we depend of the the equipment that this uh, this uh, this business and okay. um, the other disadvantage is uh, you can choose a a business that um, uh, that it is not the the, the best the best company. Or to, okay. Yeah, you, you can uh, you can if you do the if you don't do the research, you could end up selecting a bad this a bad PPL, for example, right? It is correct. Yes. All right. Okay, that was not in a conversation, but you exposed the point. Appropriately, so very good, Emerson Juan Carlos. Thank you. And we have time for one more, so we're gonna listen to room number two. Jose Romero and Mauricio Velasquez, please. Okay, me. We were talking about the advantage, and we saw little disadvantage. Okay. So Mauricio going to explain the advantage. Mauricio, you're in mute. Hello, Jose. How was your experience use TPL in your product ice cream? Hello, Mauricio. To be honest with you, I didn't try at the moment because I'm not sure. I don't see any advantage. Can you explain me? I will mention some advantage. Uh, if you're uh, a, a TPL, consider uh, save, save time and money. In second, 
and gain a powerful network of resources. In turn, improve the quality for speed, growth, and change. You understand? Yeah, but I saw any disadvantage, for example, loss of control, the cost, and business understanding. But however, I'm going to try. I'm going to give an opportunity for TPL to improve my business. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yep. Very good. <laughs> it was a good way to explain that there were little disadvantages, right? There are not too many. It's and the disadvantages happen mostly if you don't do your part of the job, like research, investigate, analyze the competition yeah, yeah. and the options that you have, right? That's usually when the disadvantages happen. But other than that, it seems like a safe idea, depending on the needs of your business, right? That's another point. If you don't know what your business needs, probably you're not going to outsource correctly, right? And this advantage is uh, to make a investment mm -hmm, exactly to make investment and probably you don't you don't know if you're gonna recover from that okay. right yeah. very good thank you all right guys that's gonna be it for tonight i am gonna take attendance one more time so please be ready when i call your name carlos vladimir rodriguez tairo jonathan fuentes eduardo antonio magaña Emerson Ulises Monroy. Eduardo Magaña is here. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Present teacher. Thank you. Jonathan Jose González. Present miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo López. Jose Carlos Argueta. Person miss. Miss. Sorry. Thank you, thank you. Jose <laughs> okay. Cesar Lemus. Juan Carlos Herrera. Thank you, Juan Jose Herrera. Carla Sofía Arquita. Present, present teacher. Thank you. Mauricio Antonio Velasquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Present. Thank you. Sandra Vigail Bonilla. Present. Thank you. Wendy Maricela Ramirez. Okay. Present, teacher. Present. Thank you. That's going to be it for tonight. Let's go to sleep or eat or finish your duties. I hope you have a nice day tomorrow and I hope to see you at night. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Have a good night. Miss, I have a question. Tomorrow. Uh, I cannot be connected on the class because I have a, a meeting. Okay. And then what should I do? Can you be connected as a oyente and not participate or can you not even connect? So you have and two options. Is... You have okay. two options. Uh, uh, if you connect, solo cuando, cuando, cuando se lo vea, le pone ahí oyente a la parte de su nombre en Zoom. Oyente y su nombre. Así yo sé que no va a participar en la clase. ¿verdad? Ok, y no hay que reportarlo con nadie más. Eh, no creo que tendría que reportarlo porque no va a faltar por completo, sino que ahí va a estar conectado, pues. Así que okay. la, asistencia, sí, la asistencia sí le va a quedar. Ajá. Gracias. Eh, uh -huh, para que no, no le afecte su, su porcentaje ahí. ¿Ok? Ok. All right. Gracias. Have a good night. Take Thank care, you. everyone.